Hey everyone, it's the tiniest one back with another video for you. Now, it may be look like a normal Corsair power supply, but this is actually a completely new, or rather a revision of an older range. So the older um, AX power supplies, the ones that used to have the red logos on the side, but these have now been brought bang up to date with the highest efficiency rating available, which is titanium. And before this, we've not really seen that many titanium rate rated power supplies from Corsair. So they really have gone in heavy and set the bar high. Uh, but also they now come with a 10 year warranty. Now these ones, despite the old AXs, you used to get, uh, there, were, there was a separation in the brand with them before because there was AX and then AXI, and they come from different OEMs. But these don't have the link, but you do have a little switch on the back for a hybrid mode and stuff like that. But anyway, despite the little magnets, which I need to show you. Let's move on. So a quick look at the box itself and you can see the lengths of the cables here if you pause it and the amount of cables that you've got. It's a really just nice and easy way for you to be able to see it. Don't forget, like I said, it's 80 plus titanium rated and a 10 year warranty. Still has the semi-passive um, uh, fans on it. When you do open the box, the first thing you are greeted with is a little pack here though. There is other stuff inside like your manual and stuff, but these are magnetic um, sides that can go on no matter what way you have it up. And as you can see, you get a blue, a red one, and a white one. The, you will get the power cable for your country, depending on where you get it from. This also does come with all of the cables in a lovely little roll mat style. There we go. There we go, Look, lovely little roll mat style. The uh, 24 pin and the PCI Express and the uh, EPS ones. EPS is your CPU power in the top left hand corner. You can see that they come uh, braided as well as being black. And then all of the other cables are just flat black cables. One of the reasons for it is in here, there are capacitors and that's to help with ripple. Uh, you can get though, because I still have some on the side, some, you see the uh, boxes there, they are individually braided cable kits that uh, you can buy from the Corsair website or select e-tailers. So you can actually change these to individually braided kits as well. If you're one of those people that do like your system to be exceptionally tidy, they come with cable combs and everything as well. So that's all nice and good. You do get some extra uh, Velcro uh, ties so you can keep your t cables even tidier. And in there, there is a Corsair powered by Corsair badge that you could put somewhere on your case if you wanted. And then the actual PSU itself. So if you were to have it fan side up, which is how I do it, it literally doesn't matter whether you have your fan up or down. If you have an open case, if you have a power supply cover at the bottom of your case, I'd probably advise you have it fan face down. What a lot of people do seem to get um, confused by though, is that if air goes in the fan here, and out the back, not the opposite way. Because they are so efficient now though, the fans really don't spin very much. With some users, you might not get it to spin at all. So you don't need to worry about calculating your power supply fan as part of the airflow for the case. Or at least I don't worry about it that much because it's, it's gonna depend on ambient temperatures. You're never gonna know whether this is gonna be on all the time. Um, like I said, some people may never get it on, or if it does come on, it may only be lightly. But you can see, if you have it that way up in your case, um, you've got the Corsair badge in the right direction. And the good thing about the magnetic is it goes on the side and covers up that horrible side. But then also, like I said, that's in the right direction. If you have it down, you've still got a nice Corsair label on the top really nice and understated as well, but you can still cover up and put your magnets on. The only reason why it's not sticking that much at the moment is because it's still got the plastic on the side. So if I go like that, there we go. And then you can put it on whatever side that you like, but ticks all the boxes in that way. Round to the back, you've got a zero RPM fan mode that you can see there. It will only come on when needed. So it's kind of like a hybrid fan setting. 
And you can see round on this side, the connections for the cables themselves. One of the things I will say about this is where it is the AX, there is no link setting, so there's no way to connect it to your system to be able to control the fans, see what the rails are doing or anything like that. It's just the normal AX brand. And that's one of the reasons why you've got the button round the back for you to be able to decide what you want the fans themselves to do. Now I've got a load tester, so it's time for me to get it set up and us to start torturing this poor little power supply. Okay then everyone, straight into the torture testing. Now I have the power supply all set up down here onto the load tester. I've set it up, so I'm gonna leave the camera still because I've put a uh, manual focus on. I can't do anything about the flicker in here, it's just because it's an LED panel and the refresh rate is slightly different to the camera. And if I change the, uh, the camera setting, you just get flickering from the lights on the wall, uh, on the ceiling instead. So we have a couple of numbers that we need to keep an eye on. This here is the number, this is the amount of watts they're actually pulling from the power supply itself, just the power supply. Then this is the number actually being pulled from the wall. So you're pulling 172.5 from the power supply itself at 94.8. Uh, percent efficiency that then means that we're pulling 181.6 from the wall itself so they're the few numbers that you need to keep an eye on there now this number here is the ripple now this is the fluctuation between the voltages because um, there are minor little ripples because you need to think that we're going from an alternating current 240 volts at 50 hertz and then trying to set it into a direct current of 12 volts so this is, uh, and the power supply is basically just there to take all of that ripple out and try and tune it into the cleanest possible 12 volt frequency available. So we are getting uh, 11 millivolts of ripple at 20% um, uh, percent load. And then 94.8 is the scene, uh, the worst I've seen for the uh, efficiency, but it's flicking between 94.8 and 94.9. But that is an exceptionally high number for this power supply because I seem to remember, I think it's anything over 90 or 90, 93 or 94 is actually acceptable for the titanium rating. So this is, is doing very, very well. Then when we flick it up to 430, now this is saying 430 and 100% is actually saying 460, but I've set it up according to the numbers on the power supply rather than these numbers here. So I've got this load formula thing over here. I don't know why the light's just gone off over there. I've got this load formula thing and I plumb the numbers in and it spits the numbers out that I need to then break down for the uh, actual testing. So I've stuck with that because I got it from an incredibly good source and I, it's the way I would do all of the others. So the fact that it's come out with 430 and 860, not quite sure why, but these are the numbers anyway. So ripple of 7.4 at the top at 50%, which is flipping low. Uh, you'll, you will see when I do the, I'm gonna change it to 7.6 because I did see 7.6. You'll see graphs pop up later on in the video because I'll edit those in afterwards. And then we've got 95.3, I did see there, 95.3% uh, efficiency. It is flicking around a bit. Again, that's because of the way it's working and how it's going about it. But you can see 430, 452, and then um, the, the efficiency there. But we can now, with a flick of a switch, go all the way up to maximum rating. One thing I will say at this point though, is the fan in the power supply hasn't even kicked in yet. Uh, it seems to be incredibly efficient. I've not actually seen it run at all yet either. But over here, you can see that uh, it's flicking between 93.4 and basically 93.6, which is the rate that I'm gonna give it. That was eight there I saw, but I'm gonna give it 93.6. Um, 93% is what we would have been looking for at this rating. So it's, uh, it's more than efficient than it needs to be. The other thing that you need to keep in mind is we're actually technically a little bit over spec. So we're pulling a little bit more than 850 watts and yet we're still, that was literally flicking up to seven and eight then as well. Um, so it's doing incredibly well and at just 10.6 millivolts of uh, ripple. Now I am noting these down because what I'm doing now is I'm literally, uh, I'm filming uh, and then taking the results rather than doing the testing separately. 
and doing them. So essentially, we get the exact results that we saw in the video. So it's done incredibly well. We're still running over 800 watts and it's still not even kicked the fan in yet. And if I'm perfectly honest with you peeps, um, I have been playing around with this, getting it all set up beforehand, and it's not even got warm yet. And the room that we're in at the moment is 22 degrees, and it's literally, it feels as cold as it did when I first set it up. Uh, it's a little bit warm underneath, right at the very front. There must be the main transfer point over here. So uh, right at the very bottom about here, it's got a slightly warmer point, but there's nothing hot or anything going on with this power supply at all. So the efficiency on it is immense because what you do need to remember is uh, the efficiency will be lost to heat because there has to be that transfer of energy somewhere. Anyway, so you've seen the testing. It's now time to recap. Okie dokie then, peeps. So I have had a little bit more of a play with, with the testing um, because the fan didn't come on. Now I know it does because there's a hybrid button on the back that you can just push and then it, um, it spins up when it warms up rather than it being a lot more semi-passive. So it's kind of like a two-stage thing. It'll always have a little bit of a spin to it or you've then got that one where it just stays off until it needs to turn on. And it didn't turn on that whole time that it was doing 850 watts. Now, what I did is I just left it running at 850 watts in the end and a good 20 minutes later, it still hadn't spun the fan at all. Now, there's nothing wrong with the power supply. It just didn't need to run it. And the, the unit itself, it still had that little warm patch underneath, but nothing else in there. Now, you do need to remember we, hit, we do have it in an open air scenario. It's quite, pardon me, difficult for me to set this up in a heated case environment because I'd then need to add a heat source inside a case because I wouldn't be able to power a PC from it because I need to put specific loads on. It does get very complicated. Um, but the room itself that we're testing at the moment is 22 degrees. So I thought personally, 20 minutes of it being completely passive. Now you also need to bear in mind that I can base this on the fact that I've tested quite a few power supplies over the years and I've seen that they normally kick in quite a bit quicker. Even the Corsair ones like the RMIs, for example, would have kicked in a lot quicker than this. And I left it 20 minutes and it actually got to the point that my load tester was starting to get hot rather than the power supply itself. Because obviously this is loads of uh, capacitors and flipping in, you know, loads of electrical gubbins to draw all that electricity out in there and this was starting to get a bit warm so it was at that point I was like well I'm not going to run it any longer just to get a number out of it normally for argument's sake with some power supplies that I've tested in the past um, 850 watts you might have been looking at a five minute threshold maybe for it being completely passive so this is just a little bit ridiculous, and it does just drive home that titanium rating definitely going to be the sort of thing where if you're one of those gamers that wants something to be incredibly quiet maybe you uh you, you are pulling a lot of watts but you don't want loads of noise coming out it could even be someone that's doing music producing for example or someone that knows they're going to be using a lot of watts at night and maybe doesn't want a noisy system waking up or disturbing other people this definitely comes into that point there you get a 10-year warranty with it as well which is rather nuts and then the rest of it is pretty much Corsair through and through I do like the fact that we've now got the magnetic labels that came was first seen on the AX 1600i which was just a nut gallium nitride powerhouse but I think the only thing that I don't like about this is the fan grill on the top of the unit itself. Love the little badge in the middle, love the fact that you can turn the power supply either way and you still get some Corsair branding going on. But it's only really going to matter if you can see the power supply in your case anyway. And obviously a lot of you out there nowadays are gonna be running a power supply shroud. But remember the advice that I gave to you before, if you've got a power supply shroud, that's the only time that you really need to face your power supply uh, fan downwards and that's so it can get cold air but beyond that it doesn't really need it you can put it the other way if you want like i tend to and i even do in my own personal rig just so that you've got uh, uh the nice look inside of it but the other good thing really is sometimes with power supplies your choice is based plainly on where that sticker is and because of these lovely magnetic things it literally doesn't matter so it's removing all the arguments that we used to have but anyway um, performance award winner because 
does exactly what it says on the tin, plus a little bit more, exceptionally quiet because the fan hardly ever spins. And even with 850 watts, I got 20 minutes in and I couldn't get it running at all. And beyond that, it's just a cracking looking power supply. Don't forget though, if you're not a fan of the cables or you want to upgrade them, you can get the individually braided ones, both from Corsair and people like Cable Mod as well. And there's lots of options for you there with different braids, cable combs. It's all down to what you want to do with your rig at home. But don't forget, the cables, it may only be a small difference, but it does make a difference. And I, the way I normally go, personally, just the way I normally go, is I normally have uh, nice coloured cables and nice coloured accessories in my rig and then fill it through, full of white lights instead, much to the dismay of the RGB fans. Um, and I don't mean fans as in the spinny things, I mean the people that actually like all the flashy stuff. But anyway, systems are all down to you, us, and we can do whatever we want with them. So I'd love to see what you did with yours. If you want to come and show us on the OC3 forums, because there's lots of forums there, you can come and show us your build log, all of that sort of thing. But for now at least, this is the tiniest one out. Ding!